What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie2988 coming at you live once again through the power of the internet. And this Friday, a new PlayStation 4 exclusive is going to drop. The game is The Order 1886. It's a game that I played the demo of. In fact, I enjoyed the demo so much, I agreed to be part of their promotional video. You may have seen that at your local GameStop. This game is currently mired in controversy, though, that's kind of derailed the entire thing. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that today. A fellow YouTuber with the account name Play Me Through uploaded a complete playthrough of the game, and this playthrough lasted a right about five hours. On a Reddit thread, he said that the game took him right around five hours to beat, that in the end he did not feel that it had much replayability, that there was no new game plus, and that overall the game was relatively short. The developers of the game have debunked this theory. They said that the game can be very quickly played through if you don't choose to explore, if you don't do any of the side stuff, if you don't try to find any of the hidden stuff, and you just focus on beating the game, you can do it quickly but they would not give an actual number of hours, but they said five hours would really be pushing it. Now, two other PlayStation players who've gotten early access to this game have actually backed up that claim. Uh, Neo Gaffer Verandas said it took him about 10 hours to beat the game, and another PlayStation user by the name of W. McHale, well, you can read all about his story here below, but he says it should take you about nine or 10 hours to beat the game as well. We just won't know how long this game is until Friday when it's released to the general public and reviewers are allowed to say how long the game actually is and when you and I get a chance to sit down and play it chances are it's probably going to last about 10 hours but whether it's 5 hours or 10 hours I want to talk to you about how I feel about short games and I want to see what you think as well now while I'm pretty sure that it's going to turn out to be false 5 hours for a video game is unheard of for a $60 title, there is absolutely no way that I would ever be okay with that. I don't care how beautiful the graphics are. I don't care how compelling the story is. Hell, I don't even care if there's a new game plus with a lot of replayability. For me, five hours worth of content is just not going to cut it, especially if there's DLC planned, a day one season pass, or anything along those lines. That is out of my price range. I will not support a game that does that. But when I realized this about myself, I had to stop and ask the question, why? Why would I refuse to pay $60 for a game that only lasted five hours? Even if it's as fun as The Order 1886 was in the demo, and I really enjoyed the demo that I played at the PlayStation Experience, I still refuse to play it. What formula in my head am I working with? And I realized something. I always break it down to dollar value per hour. Now, when I compare it to other types of media, and that's how I perceive video games, it's just a different form of media, I find that I have a pretty decent standard. If I go see a two-hour movie at the theater, then I spend tw uh, 10 bucks on the ticket, I'm going to pay about $5 per hour. Netflix gives me a ridiculous amount of value on a monthly cost. Hell, even back when I was paying $100 a month for cable, all I had to do was watch about 20 hours to get $5 an hour, and that seemed like a good deal with me. So $5 an hour is my personal formula. I'm okay with spending as much as $5 per hour and I'm going to feel like I'm getting my money's worth. That means your average $60 video game needs to last about 12 and a half hours for me to get my value out of it and I'm curious if your formula is much different and if it is let me know in the comments section below. But you know my biggest concern here is knowing that developers will change the way they develop a game in order for us to get that perceived value. And sometimes this is fantastic fantastic. When a game is really good, getting 20 or 30 or 40 hours out of it is fantastic. But with other games, we will see tacked on multiplayer that no one ever really gets involved in. We'll see side quests or main uh, story content that just feels added in in order to pad the game. We'll see gameplay mechanics that are there to slow down gameplay just so that people don't fear that uh, losing that value. And a lot of the times that's ruined a few games. The question that I have for you is a question I've asked myself. What if a video game does come out that's 1080p, 60 frames per second, and looks absolutely fantastic, has a storyline that is so compelling, it crossovers from gamers into media altogether, inspires a movie and a book? What if it has gameplay elements that are just so fun and so innovative that you love it, and you love playing it, and you tell everyone they want to play it, but that game only clocks in at five hours? How would you feel? 
Because the truth of the matter is, innovation is something that's completely lacking in this industry right now. We see a lot of games fitting a very narrow formula, one that we as gamers demand. And I would like to think that that five-hour game could exist. And certainly, it's not going to be the 1886. That's probably not how long it lasts, and it probably doesn't deserve to last that long if it's that. But I'd like to think that if that game did come down the pipe, if the dream game came down the pipe, you guys would support it. And that's that's what I hope, because I think I try to support it too. So let me know in the comments section below, what's the minimum number of hours you expect to get out of a $60 title? Why do you feel that way? How you've arri have you arrived at that? If you use a mathematical formula like I do, let me know what that formula is. But as always, guys, thanks for indulging me. I will be playing the Order 1886 over the weekend when my copy gets here. I'll live tweet it and let you know how long it takes me to beat it. Don't forget to wait for the reviews as always. Wait for the reviews, wait for YouTubers to get a hold of it, wait for people you trust to play the game before you pre-order or buy. Just never pre-order. It's that simple. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I love you guys, and I'll speak with you soon.